Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Maryville University Hockey Center side of tonight's matchup between the Miami of Ohio Red Hawks and your Maryville Saints. I'm Todd Panula alongside Andrew Marsh, and we're here to bring you all of tonight's action as we are in the pregame show right now. Marshy, we've got two evenly matched teams overall in terms of a record. Maryville comes in at 3-2-1. and one. The Red Hawks are 4-1-1. One and one. Both of them have higher-powered offenses, so it's going to be up to the goaltenders and up to the defenders to try to slow things down. Yeah, it should be a fun one tonight. Of course, Maryville playing in their second home game this season, and they're coming off a 4-3 loss to Jamestown, so you know these girls are going to want to put the buck in the back of the net and hopefully come home with a win tonight. Yeah, springboarding off of that, we do look at what the uh, Saints did in their last road trip. They've been on the road for quite some time. They went one and two on the road in North Dakota, taking on a couple different teams. Uh, they went uh, one and one against Minot, so they picked up a victory and then lost in the Saturday game. And then in a Sunday matchup, they lost to Jamestown in overtime. So they managed to keep everything pretty close. They're mm -hmm. kind of right on the cusp but they just couldn't pull off the victories in more than that one game. Yeah, and they'll have a tough test tonight. Of course, you want to keep these games close, but at the same time, you want to keep building. And, of course, you know, you're not winning these games, but you are keeping things close, and you're, you're pushing. You're pushing until that final horn sounds. And so I expect a lot of the same thing tonight with these uh, these women. They're eager for a win, a win tonight on home ice, and it uh, should be a fun one tonight. Well, we talked about the, the teams needing to slow down these high-powered offenses. One of the things that's going to do that for Maryville is their starting goaltender as we look at some of the statistics for Sawyer Duncan, who will be in between the pipes here tonight for the Maryville Saints. You see she's got uh, most of the wins, in fact, all of the wins for the Saints thus far, as she is 3-1 and one at save percentage. Maybe a little bit lower than she would like overall, but... Uh, still looking for that first shutout of the season as well. Yeah, Sawyer Duncan giving this team an opportunity tonight to pick up a W, and she's looked good so far this season, and I'm sure this team is going to have a lot of confidence in her as they take on the Red Hawks tonight. So Sawyer Duncan will be solidifying the backside of things. Now we move up forward as we look at the line to watch for here tonight. A high-powered offense is led by this trio for the Maryville Saints as Sidney Poisson, one of the high goal scorers for this program since she's joined it. A little bit low in terms of the goal scoring compared to some of her teammates, Ali Rutherford with four goals on the year. But with the newcomers stepping up so far for Maryville, they haven't had to rely on Sydney as much though so far this season. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great to see that, you know, everyone's pitching in for this team. And you look at Ellie Rutherford, 11 points in those six games. Expect her to create some offense tonight. Of course, you have Sophie Brennan, who's dishing the puck out, playing center. And it's nice when you don't have to rely on some of the players that you have had to rely on in the past. We've seen that on the men's side, and now we're seeing it a little bit more on the women's side with these newcomers coming in, taking up important roles and taking, up, uh, taking off a little bit of the pressure from the players that have been here before. Well, we've seen the forward line. We've seen the goaltender. Let's take a look at the entire starting lineup. We pretty much uh, already revealed it for you <laughs> as it's going to be Sawyer Duncan in the net. The only thing that we haven't talked about are those defenders, uh, but Duncan will be in between the pipes. Her defenders are going to be Morgan McGowan as well as the captain, Emma Gerwitz. Up on the forward line, as we mentioned, it'll be Sidney Poisson centered by Sophie Brennan. And on the opposite wing, it's going to be the leading goal scorer for the Saints, Ellie Rutherford. That'll wrap up our pregame show. We will take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have the puck drop between the Red Hawks and the Saints here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I think the thing I love most about going back to St. Louis are the people. Every time I come back, there's something new. There's so much of the city that I have yet to explore. From Six Flags to the Science Center to the Loop. Ted Drews. Hey, and what about the sports? Come on. You have to get to a Cardinals game. You have to get to a Blues game. I mean, you have to see the arch if you go to St. Louis. It is Instagram bait. St. Louis is home. It's my home. The Maryville Saints Hockey Network welcomes you to the following presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association.
this is my calling. Where I was always meant to be. And everything I've worked for, everything my team has worked for. Every practice, every drill has led me here. When the lights go up and we hit that ice, it's all about that one perfect moment. Because this is our calling. And welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center. Todd Panula alongside Andrew, don't call me Adam Marsh. <laughs> it is the Saints against the Red Hawks with Miami coming up with the puck initially. They work it into the zone on the left-hand side, given up in the neutral zone, ping-ponging back and forth, and eventually the Red Hawks get it in deep. Saints take control, and they work it out through the middle. Poisson will come in on the right-hand side, back to the forehand, takes a quick shot, and an early glove hand save with 19.37 left to go. Yeah, good job keeping it simple in their own zone, able to make the breakout pass, and just like that, you get an opportunity get a shot on, and now you have an offensive zone draw coming to try and make something happen in the O-zone. Off the draw, puck into the near side corner, swept along the boards as it trickles over to the far wing. Feather pass up the wall, and the Red Hawks get it to center. Quickly taken back the other way by Brennan. She lost control as it's lifted back into the zone on the offensive side by Bryn Jones. Chopped over into the far side corner. A little bit of a jersey grab there. Referee keeps the arm down. A little over 45 seconds played here in the opening period. Red Hawks looking for their fifth win of the year. Saints looking for the fourth. Tapped back and forth along the red line. Red Hawks get it in on the offensive side, but then they'll head off on a partial change. Bryn was the only one that uh, stayed in the zone. Bryn Jones, that is. Gloves down and brought up the ice by Callhammer. She whips it on around, chasing it down in the far corner. Morris leaves it for Callhammer. She lost control of it, but the Red Hawks are able to clear the puck. Potential three on two, that's thwarted. Standing it up nicely was Rutherford. Or check that, it was actually Paige Dawson. Saints rolling a change themselves as they're able to complete it. Held in along the line by Kelso. Picked up along the end wall. Lork pushes it over here to the near side. Intercepted by O'Leary. Looking back towards the blue line. Furbit is there. She got a stick onto it, so that'll negate a potential icing call as we've played two minutes. Up the near hand side, the intended target was O'Leary. A stick save made, and then the rebound popped up into the air, but harmlessly set away by Furbit. Good look on goal, though, by the Red Hawks. Shots are one apiece. Almost miscommunication, but the speed of Gerwitz is able to catch up and deny her captain counterpart a potential centering pass. That was Riley Oliver to disrupt things through the middle. McGowan leaves it. Gerwitz picks it up. Saucers one over the four checker. And now it's given away an opportunity for the Red Hawks. LeBear with a pass in towards the middle. Duncan didn't have that post sealed, but the puck ends up in behind the net. Gerwitz charges up the ice, jams one off the wall. This one should be icing, and it will be, so that will keep some tired Saints players out on the ice. Yeah, just a no-look pass to the middle of the ice. Luckily for the Saints, the puck does not go in the back of the net. And for Sawyer Duncan, sometimes you just got to get lucky. You have to have your, your best friend back there, the, the post, able to keep that puck out on a, a few shifts ago. Now wide open chance, big save made by Duncan as she came out of the crease to cut off the angle, denying Jones on the doorstep. Yeah, good job by Sawyer Duncan to challenge that shot. Makes a great save. 
Erwitz pushes one over to the far side, doesn't clear the zone, hammered back in behind the net. McGowan leaves it now for Gerwitz. She's got a little more space this time. Rink wide off the near side boards and carried up ice. Finally, a line change available for the Saints as Argaropoulos was able to dump it into the far corner. Intercepted on the way through as Dawson puts it back up to Poisson at the blue line, but she forgot about the puck as she crossed the line. Defender was sprawled out on the ice as well as Abby Benjamin was trying to take away some space. Saints hold it in as Dawson's right along the blue line, up to the half wall, to the face-off dot. Shot was taken by Brennan, but it didn't make its way through. Henning comes up the near side. Again, walling that off. Nab this time. Red Hawks try and find some space on the far side, and so far the Saints have done well to clog things up through the middle. Brooks was able to get a stick to it into the offensive zone, but it doesn't stay there for long. 4.30 played here in the first period. Dawson way back in her own zone. Stretch pass was denied. She just blindly whacks it, and that's caught up in the paraphernalia of one of the Red Hawks. So we'll get a stoppage with 15-21 to go in the first. Yeah, good pace of this game so far. A lot of back and forth action. Two shots apiece for both teams here. I don't know about you, Todd, but the, the red and white is kind of confusing me with this white net in front of us. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> it's just <laughs> a lot of the same color just in reverse for both teams. Exactly. Maryville in the uh, white with the red trim. Reverse that for Miami. A little bit of a later start than we had intended here this evening due to the uh, men's game going a little bit late. And then uh, in between games, the captain of the men's team, Jack Harrison, proposed to his girlfriend, and she accepted. So congratulations to them. An offensive opportunity now for Maryville is thwarted, but they're going to go on to the power play. Still stick handling. Getting a shot off is Colleen O'Leary. That was denied. Finally, Miami touches it up. And we will have, I believe, a hooking call against Miami, and Maryville will have the first power play of the evening. Yeah, just a good effort from O'Leary there, driving the net, staying with the puck, and allowing the Miami defender to get a stick in there. And now it looks like the Saints will be on the power play, and a good opportunity for them here still early in this first period. So Laura Cogswell into the sin bin for two minutes. Maryville fans hoping for a little bit less as they would like a goal. Here's Gerwitz with the wrister, deflected in front. Big save made on the blocker. And then the rebound is covered. So a nice face-off win and leads to an opportunity for the Saints. And that's important when you want to set things up because those zone entries... Sometimes you can get caught at the blue line, but if you can win that face off inside the O zone, set something up, you have a better opportunity. Whip shot in from the far circle, but that didn't make its way through. Somebody got in front. Here's another opportunity for O'Leary. She lost it. It's picked up. Short angle shot. That goes wide. Gerwood steps up from the blue line to keep it alive. She'll put one towards goal, and that was deflected wide. Held in along the far side. Rutherford comes into the circle. She'll put it into the mixer. The rebound is loose, and it comes back out in front. I don't know if that hit the side of the goal or the goaltender got a piece of it as she was pirouetting around. But nevertheless, the Red Hawks keep that zero on the board for now. Kerwitz holds it in along the line. Again, a long shot. O'Leary couldn't get a piece, so that led to a pad save. They dig in along the wall, and finally Miami is able to clear 52 seconds left in the power play. Both teams are changing. 13.25 to go in the period. Scoreless game. Saints lead the shot battle 6-2 thus far. Here comes Brooks charging right up the gut. Taking on four defenders. She'll gallop into the corner. In behind the net. She's got Tool along the circle. She thought about the wrister. Goes cross ice with the pass. And then the shot ends up ricocheting off the end wall as Kyla Morris missed the target. Dawson back over to Morris. She'll take a shot this time. That leads to a save. Rebound comes to the near side. Jab up towards the blue line. 
And Tool could not hold the zone. Rink wide it goes and then back through the middle. A little struggling on the handle was Dawson as that was too far out in front. Four seconds left, so that'll just about do it for the first power play for Maryville, and we're back to five on five. Yeah, didn't get a goal there, but had some good opportunities, some good shots on net. They were working the puck in the offensive zone. Something to build on if they get another opportunity here in the first period. Feely comes up the near wing. That was disrupted as McBain stepped into it. Schwarzer gets on her horse, back to the forehand, shot over the goal. Loose puck along the near side wall, slips through the middle. Maryville gets it into the neutral zone, but again, not for too long. Gerwitz tracks it down below the goal line. Swipes went over here to the near side. Cogswell takes control. Far side, it goes to Schuler. She'll tap it in. Again, Gerwitz is there. Finds a teammate this time as she gets it up the wall. Argaropoulos couldn't quite get it out of the zone. McBain left it off for McGowan. Or, uh, Mc yeah, there's a lot of mix in this team now. <laughs> McGowan drops it for Gerwitz. Argaropoulos looking up north for Brennan. She was able to get a stick onto it, so no icing. Back through the middle, a bouncer held in by Kelso but almost intercepted on the way through as Brennan was in there. Rutherford is in, a chance to put it towards goal. The puck is bouncing like a Super Bowl right now, and the Red Hawks get it away. What's a Super Bowl? Is that a bouncy ball? Yeah, that like a bigger bouncy <laughs> ball? <laughs> no, it was one of the little ones. I, maybe it was a brand name back when <laughs> I was a kid. I don't know, that's what we called them with Super Bowls. Into the neutral zone. 10.50 to go here in the first. On the back check, taken back by Labar. She leaves it up through the middle as Jones tried to come in on the near side. She's stuck with uh, Furbit. Stick was in a rather uncomfortable place, we'll just say that. Intercepted on the way through. Stick save made, and then the rebound score! The puck came out of the glove. Don't know why I said stick side, because it went in on the glove of Sawyer Duncan, but she couldn't keep it in the trapper. And it came right back out onto the stick. And Miami takes the one to nothing lead as that one was finished off by Jones. Yeah, nice transition for Miami. They get the puck up. And Sawyer Duncan, I'm sure she'd like to have that rebound back. And that's unfortunate for Maryville because for the, most, for the most part, they've had all of the opportunities here in the first period. Seems like the puck has been in the Miami zone for the majority of the first period. And to have that goal go in, it's, uh, it's not a great feeling. Jones at 9.34 gives the Red Hawks a one to nothing lead. Trying to answer, here comes Cooper. She'll Trot on around the goal, back towards the point. Nav with the puck, she's got a shooting lane and still puts it wide. Gerwitz comes up from her blue line spot. There's nobody guarding the blue line now as Nav has gone to the bench. Here comes McGowan off the bench. O'Leary back to McGowan at the point. She walks the line, loses control of the puck. She never seemed comfortable with it. She was on her backhand and never could twist herself back on the right side. Lorca pops one up, tapped by Farrell. She tracks it down right in front of her own bench, gets a little bit of a shoulder. And although we've only seen one game thus far here at the Maryville University Hockey Center, they've definitely relaxed the rules in terms of uh, body contact for the women, which is good to see. It's a contact game, but you're still not allowed to just outright check somebody. A little scary moment there for Miami as the puck got caught up right next to the post. That puck is still loose. Finally, the referee lost sight of it long enough. So we get another whistle, and there'll be a, a second offensive zone faceoff for the Saints. And that referee, he had that whistle to his mouth and he elected to just hang on just for a, another second. 
because that puck did squirt loose. So good on the official to put the whistle away for a split second because, like you said, Todd, this puck, it's like a Super Bowl. It's bouncing in all types of different directions. Oftentimes you'll see it in these late games. You see Heiss has just kind of been used up all day despite the fact that they resurface it each time. So we'll try to keep track of it. How much the puck doesn't want to settle down as it does them right there. It's on end, rolling. Good clearance by the Saints as they try to springboard a counterattack. Red Hawks just kind of clogging things up along the blue line. It's been a, a battle of Maryville against Ohio teams here as uh, the men's team took on the Ohio Bobcats, split that series. The women hoping to get a victory here tonight and then see what happens tomorrow. And here's an odd man rush. Here comes Brooks. He'll go up the middle, finds a player on the far side, back in it through the middle. Brooks takes a swipe at it, and they come up empty. It seemed to be disjointed from the start. Nobody really knew where to go on their lanes. But still an opportunity for Maryville to get on the board. As Brooks... Punches it on around, chased down by Callhammer. She goes to the far corner. She's ridden hard to the wall. Puck pops back down below the end line. There's some uh, jousting going on. Referee's got his eye behind the play, so he's got control of it. But still didn't find anything to put anybody into the box. Saints out shooting their opponent nine to four, but they trail one to nothing. Here comes O'Leary. She's guarded closely by two players and took the puck right into a defensive stick. Good centering pass, though. She found Cooper. But then the stick move was a bit too fancy as the puck just kind of stuck in between her skates. Wow, a good little pop shot over to the far side. That comes up empty as it was put a little too high. 6.45 to go here in the period. Dawson takes a couple whacks at it. Doesn't clear the zone, though. They dig in along the near side wall. Five-man scrum. And the puck pops over to the far wing. Cooper chops it out. And that'll slow it up so there's no icing. Saints are changing. Red Hawks were trying to dump it in so they could chase it down. Instead, they'll have to chase it in their own zone. Good four check from the Saints. They're able to steal it. Centering pass, and they come up empty again. They were trying to drop it off to Agaropoulos. Deflected puck ends up in behind the Saints' net. Gerwitz chases it in the corner. Just guides one down the ice. No icing, even though it crosses all the requisite lines. So it'll go back down the other way. And again, no icing. They're going to say that it deflected off somebody in the middle. So back and forth we go, but no real purpose on the last couple pushes up ice for either team. Hurwitz tried to get it through the middle. She was thwarted by Talibai. And Rutherford is upended. Somewhat of a dangerous contact there as a... It's kind of scooped up from behind. Kerwitz slows it up just enough to give herself some space, but that dries up like water in the sun. Red Hawks have it back in their own zone. 15 minutes played. A Bryn Jones goal at 9.34 is the difference. Kalhammer got to stick to it in the neutral zone, but now here's a shot up high. Glove save made was probably going over the net, but still a good opportunity for Duncan to grab onto it and slow things down. Yeah, it's been back and forth, and like you said, Todd, not a lot of purpose to these rushes back and forth, but we have seen Maryville get their opportunities in front. They're unable to get those shots off. Of course, they had that odd man break. It looked like a three-on-one at the time. And it was a nice play entering into the zone, but they just couldn't capitalize. Red Hawks have it along the half wall as they dig in towards the circle. A shot angled in, and that one is stopped. 
Not a bad opportunity for Schuler to just send that one towards the net, but Duncan was guarding the post well. Red Hawks tried to slap it towards goal right off the draw. Here comes Cooper the other way. She's got some wheels and a foot race with Hennig. They tie it up in the near side corner as both sides dig in. O'Leary puts a stick into it. Tool is there as well. Cooper's gone towards the front of the net, but impossible to get it to her on the pass because it's still stuck up along the wall. Red Hawks finally able to slip away with it. Now they've got an odd player rush the other direction. Great poke check though by Dawson. About five feet away from the blue line to deny all of that. O'Leary crosses the red line, has it jabbed away. Tool comes over to help. The player upended for Miami was Abby Benjamin. She'll go off the bench, a little bit shaken up. 3.35 to go. O'Leary taps it out to center, but no further. Red Hawks come back in. Tool's going to go to the penalty box, and that's pretty much what we were talking about. And that was a good step up play by Tool, but she's going to go to the penalty box as there was just a little too much contact in it. So now Miami, an opportunity on the power play. As it looks like from this back half of the first period, they've been getting their chances, and now they have a chance to extend the lead. 3.26 to go in the period. Two minutes up on the board against Emily Toole. Red Hawks win the draw. Back to the point. Brent Benjamin to the half wall. Shot in. That was knocked away. Henning over towards the far corner. Jones down low. Oh, they were trying to set it up in the middle to Smith. A defensive stick. I believe it was Gerwitz just enough to deny it. Now wristed in again, looking for a deflection. That got through cleanly. Duncan made the initial save. Puck back towards the goal line. Saints get it up towards the blue line, but Cooper could not find that last little push to get it out. 40 seconds gone. Step it up. Long rainbow shot. And that's turned away by the blocker as Benjamin got a little behind it. Smith to the edge of the circle. Gives it off. Cross ice pass. Benjamin goes down low. Henning goes to the bench. Just a one player change right now for Miami. Here's Jones, the goal scorer, looking for number two. She'll drop it off. To the goal line. Jones is set up along the half wall, takes the pass. Back out up top. Slap shot coming, deflected, and it's on top of the net. It rolled off the shoulder of Sawyer Duncan. She really didn't know where it was, and fortunately for her, it glanced off the crossbar and settled on top of the goal. Yeah, some players out in front. A good job by Sawyer Duncan to fight that off and make the stop. And you don't really see that all too often, the puck sitting on top of the net. It's much like when the basketball gets stuck next to the hoop and in the corner. Another good save made by Duncan. She was able to get a stick to that one. It was trickling over towards that far post, but the Saints ultimately cleared out. 25 seconds left in the power play. 1.45 left in the period now. Saints content to just kill some time off here right in front of their own bench. If they keep this up, they might kill off the remaining 10 seconds. Miami comes away with it, though. Perhaps enough time to get one more shot towards goal. Farrell has it along the half wall. She's guarded closely. And Callhammer is able to clear it out. Saints might have had a breakaway opportunity, but they elected to put Tool on the bench. And that put Morris out just a step too slow, so they couldn't find her on the clearance. Yeah, either way, a good penalty kill right there. Sawyer Duncan able to make the stops that she needed to. Keeps this a one-goal game. Miami's evened up the shot battle, nine to nine. They lead the most important category, one to nothing. Delayed offsides, doesn't matter as the Saints have it. Kelso weaving her way through, finds Brooks here on the near side, but it was a little too far away. She tried a centering pass, had Callhammer in the middle. 
Gerwitz with a shot. That's knocked away by a defender. Brooks steps in. She's able to get it. Callhammer with it in the corner. She's twisted around. 30 seconds left in the period. Red Hawks send it over to the far side. McGowan taps at it. Feeds it up the wall. Shot by Morris was knocked down. Miami gets it up to the red line. Gerwitz with a step up. Pops it up in the air. Callhammer sidesteps the four check. And the poke check as well. Brooks tried to put it in through the middle. It'll come all the way out to Gerwitz. She was looking up her 90 the other way, and a body came in just at the last moment to deny that one. That might have been a seeing eye shot, but ultimately, through 20 minutes of play, it has been Miami with the better as they lead one to nothing. Yeah, overall, good period for both teams. I thought Maryville. They had a jump there early in the first period. Unfortunately, Miami gets an opportunity and they, t they capitalize on it. A shot, a stop by Sawyer Duncan and then a rebound and Sawyer Duncan unable to make that second effort save. So that is where we stand heading into the intermission. So we'll step aside when we come back. We'll, we'll have your intermission report. We'll talk things over and we'll look ahead to the second period as well. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Maryville Saints hockey on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse has called St. Louis home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we'll treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that you need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities, and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money back guarantee and exchange policy. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, every treat you right you see. There's two types of drivers out there. Drivers who know how to protect their investment and drivers who don't. Car owners who know how to get more miles per gallon and owners who don't. We're talking people who know their Schaefer and people who don't. Which one are you? From cars to trucks to diesel workhorses, whatever you drive, there's a Schaefer synthetic oil for you. Do you know your Schaefer? Ask for it at an automotive retailer near you. St. Louis, 314-645-2000. This is the letter I've been telling you about. This letter is for you. From what I hear, you're supposed to be the next Tom Brady. What I'm about to say is important. Never let them call you the next Tom Brady. When they compare you to the goats, tune it out. When they say you're a sixth round draft pick, store it away. Compare yourself to nobody but the kid in the mirror. The one who goes all in, all out, and has the crazy confidence to know that who you are today is just a piece of who you're going to become. This letter's for that you, the one no one will see coming. Sincerely, Tom.
Moneta may be one of the nation's largest independent wealth managers, but what we pride ourselves on most is serving each client like they're part of the family. That's why we go to extraordinary lengths to help our clients reach their unique financial goals. Whether launching a business, providing retirement planning for employees, or building a multi-generational legacy. At Moneta, whatever you cherish, we help protect it today, tomorrow, and into the future. MSHN Intermission Report, brought to you by the following. Hogan Trucking, comprehensive transportation, straightforward solutions. And welcome into the Maryville Saints Intermission Show, brought to you by Hogan Trucking. Todd Panula alongside Andrew Marsh. It's the Red Hawks on top of the Saints by a score of one to nothing after 20 minutes and not quite what we expected in terms of the offensive firepower between these two teams, although there were 19 shots in total. Yeah. But it, it seemed like both of them were fairly content to just kind of mix it up in the neutral zone, and, and there weren't a whole lot of clear-cut scoring opportunities. Yeah, I think both teams are just trying to feel each other out at this point. You saw a couple opportunities for the Saints early in that first period, and then you saw Miami of Ohio get their opportunities as well, and they capitalized on their opportunities. We saw the Saints, they had a three-on-one that they just couldn't put in the back of the net. Of, co of course, a couple passes out front that they couldn't get the shot off or it might have went right under the stick. But, yeah, a lot of back and forth in the neutral zone. I'm sure that will change here in the second period. I just want to get a feel for what the other team is bringing, and uh, I think things will change here in the next 40 minutes of hockey. A lot of bouncing pucks in that first period compared it to a, a bouncy ball, Super Bowl, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Uh, it, it, I think that that's going to be a key for the rest of this contest is how well that puck settles down or doesn't settle down, and that could uh, potentially spring counterattacks for both sides if, if you're not necessarily careful with what you're doing. Yeah, and I think that's what we saw in that first goal is it was right at the blue line. It hit off a stick. It bounced right, you know, right to where the, the Red Hawks needed it to go, and they went down and scored. And and that same, same thing goes for, you know, a lot of the shots are bouncing right off the pads. We're seeing, uh, you know, both goaltenders uh, not able to make clean saves right off that first rip. And so we're seeing a lot of bouncing pucks squirt loose inside the blue paint. So if I'm the Saints, you got to go to that blue paint. If the puck's going to be there, try and whack one home and tie this game up. 
So it was scoreless through much of the first period. The lone goal came from Bryn Jones at 9.34 for the Miami Red Hawks, and that has stood the test of time throughout the rest of the first 20 minutes of play. Going into the second period, Marshy, uh, if, if you're Maryville, what do you have to try to do to get on the board to get things evened up? I think they got to keep doing what they're doing right now. They're getting those looks. They just have to capitalize on them, and like I just said, go hard to the front of the net because that puck is loose, and if you can find it, put it in the back of the net and get things tied up and hopefully take the lead. Also, on the power play, capitalize on your opportunities. We've seen a power play apiece for both teams so far, so I think special teams will play a factor the rest of the way in this one. We'll see how many penalties are taken, but if you do get that opportunity, take advantage of it. Shots are 10 to nine, actually in favor of Maryville after the first period, but the score is one to nothing in favor of the visitors. We'll take another break. That'll wrap it up for your Hogan Trucking Intermission Report. We'll be back with your second period right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Lost together, we discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things that matter deserve time. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates. Because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there. And they never tasted this good. Coke with coffee. We blended Coke with rich coffee for one very good reason. Your afternoon pick-me-up routine needed it. Simple as that. Coke with coffee. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse has called St. Louis home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that you need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities, and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money-back guarantee, and exchange policy. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, every 
treat you right, you'll see. There's power in numbers. Number ones will cook you with that first step. Your L, sir. Compliments of the chef. Number tens, more gold than Midas. Midas who? One, two, three, four, three, four, three, two, one. Twenty-fours will live in your head. Thirty-threes put in so many hours, they'll be the first to defeat Father Time. What you got, thirty-three? Clowns up, old man. Run it back. I said run it back. Fifties. Ice in their veins. And eighty-sevens are so good, they just set up shot. And we're underway here in the second period. Miami with a one to nothing lead. And I believe they're going to be up a player as well as it looks like the Saints have taken an early second period penalty as the captain Emma Gerwitz heads to the sin bin on a hooking call. So the Red Hawks who are 0 for 1 will have another chance to double up their lead as they go back onto the power play. Yeah, not quite the start you want if you're Maryville, not even 10 seconds into the second period. And now you're down a man early in this second frame. But a nice face-off win and clear. So a good start to the penalty kill. Cooper was charging up on the four check, but now she has to go the length of the ice to get back into position. She does so. Held up at the line by Hennig. She hands it off to LeBaire. She trots in behind, puts a shot in from an angle, and Duncan was able to keep it out and then cover up the loose puck as well. 135 left to go on the power play. Yeah, good job by Sawyer to press up against that post, stand her ground right in the crease. Like I said in the intermission report, there's a second opportunity there after the save, so Miami, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to go hard to the net. I expect the same thing from Maryville when they get their opportunities in the offensive zone. Benjamin with the wrister. That was blocked by O'Leary, but it popped right over to the far side for Hennig. Back out straight away to Benjamin. Sure, shot was blocked. O'Leary couldn't quite get up quick enough to get a breakaway opportunity, but she will clear it down the ice and will actually force a faceoff in the offensive zone as Maya Gonzalez decided to cover that one up. Yeah, a good block by O'Leary there. That's exactly what you want to see if you're the Saints, getting bodies in front of pucks, especially on the penalty kill. And that just kills time off the clock, especially when you're on a, a penalty kill. You want that time to keep running. Saints win another faceoff as Callhammer fell backwards. She was initially looking around, hoping there might be a penalty, but there will not be. Red Hawks just kind of dump it into the zone. And the Saints will hammer it down the ice again. Gonzalez will keep it in play this time as we're under a minute to go here in the power play. Riley Oliver puts it up through the middle. A little hard to handle, though, for Natalie Farrell. Saints will clear it again. Red Hawks look a little bit disjointed here on this power play attack as they've got less than 30 seconds left on it. Stretch pass up the far wing, comes over here to the near side. Farrell again is handcuffed just a little bit. She settles it down and now they'll set it up at the blue line. It's Cogswell back to Farrell along the near side boards. Cogswell straight away looking over to the left instead comes to the right. Cogswell was the one wanting that shot, instead it's a shot in by Lasconis. That didn't get its way through. And we're back to five on five hockey. Saints had an opportunity to send that one down and now they're gonna say there's no icing. Gonzalez was trying to cover it up with the blocker, couldn't quite get it under control. Not quite sure why they waved off that icing call, but that did benefit Maryville. They get their fresh attackers out on the ice as they go with their top line. Off the side of the cage, here's Poisson. She puts it back into the mixer, but nobody was there in white. Red Hawks come back the other way, up through the middle. Just a little too far out of the reach of Schwartzer. McGowan punches it off the near side wall, and here's Brooks. A nice play to get onto the forehand. 
And then a defensive stick of Sidney Schuler was just enough to jab that one loose. Three minutes and change played here in the second period. It's still a one to nothing game. Miami charges into the offensive zone from the far wing. Stepping up defensively was McGowan, denying a look for LeBaire. This one will end up as an icing call with 16.39 left to go in the middle frame. So a good kill for Maryville. Get some momentum from that penalty kill. Of course, you hate to see the Saints taking one that early, but nevertheless, you can grab some momentum from something like that. Saints can't clear it off the draw. Hennig popped the pass up into the corner, looking for Smith. She'll carry it in behind the net to the far side. Dawson rides her into the corner. Off the wall, picked up by Farrell. Twisting and turning, and Morris was able to sweep it out. Red Hawks have it back in their own zone. In the offensive end, fanning on most of that. It, it did trickle towards the goal. Duncan will cover it up, so it'll be a defensive zone face-off for Maryville. Both teams have gotten a few shots in on goal here in this period. It was 10-9 after the first period. It's 11-11 right now. Dawson twisted around, but couldn't get that puck very much up the boards. Tool throws a shoulder into the back of the bear. O'Leary had it jabbed away. A lot of jousting going on here in the second period thus far. That puck glides up towards the blue line, but doesn't cross. Saints will just put it over here towards the near side. Too strong for Cooper. O'Leary on the back check, had it for a moment. Cooper comes into the offensive zone. Saints were thinking about a change. Dawson goes off. Now it's a partial breakaway. Here comes Jones, and the save is made and jabbed away by Duncan. Good active stick to poke that one loose. Saints trying to come back the other way. Here comes Tool from the left wing. Glides around the net, left it there. She thought that Argonopoulos would be there. She was eventually, but not quite enough to keep that play running smoothly. McBain on the backhand to Kelsel. McBain in the corner, just a little bit out of her reach. Argonopoulos leaves it for McBain. She's trying to put it into the middle. O'Brien was there. But again, that pass, that final pass, just isn't quite on just yet. 14.40 to go here in the second period. Jones stick handles her way around. That's going to lead to an odd man rush. And that just exploded off the stick of Schuler. So that is all negated. Furbit pops it up the wall. Held in along the line. Ends up in behind the Maryville net. Kelsel plays it up the near side wall. Argoropoulos was turned around. Moskonis comes up with the puck. Not for long again. Stepping up to the blue line is Hennig. Her shot goes way up and over. Benjamin steps into one, and that one dips just past the net. A slap shot, right pad save made. It had some steam behind it from Oliver. 13.45 to go here in the second. Saints almost got caught in another line change. Whipped on around. Linesman had to duck and cover. Poisson calmly holds on to it, tries to cross the line at center. She's going to draw a penalty, though. Red Hawks are going to touch it. 13-17 to go here in the period. And Maryville will head to their second power play. On another hooking call. Yeah, kind of a harmless play there. I don't think that was really necessary, but a good heads up play by uh, the referee, I guess. And looks like the Saints will have their second opportunity here on the power play to even things up. Yeah, I almost think it was one of those calls where he made the call simply because there, there really wasn't any 
need to, to hook puts on. She wasn't going anywhere. But it benefits Maryville, so we'll see if they can do anything with it. They go from point to corner over to the circle. Poisson goes down low again. O'Brien trying to come out straight away. Gerwitz stick handles around. Poisson's on the far circle, steps into it, and the shot right into the bread basket as Gonzalez eats it up. Yeah, I like the puck movement. A couple of those passes not connecting, but a good job to keep control of the puck inside the offensive zone and, yeah, get a shot on. Nothing wrong with throwing the puck towards the net. And set things up again and get another good look. Here's Gerwitz, and that one just off the stick side. Gerwitz steps over towards the blue line as that one was dangerously close to the blue line, but the Saints do hold. Here's O'Brien. Thought about giving it off to O'Leary. She does do so as O'Leary was back on the forehand. Gerwitz walks the line, doesn't have a shooting lane. Gets it from Dawson. Gerwitz takes it this time right into the trapper. Gerwitz is the leading goal scorer. Five goals on the year despite being a defender. But she's had a solid start in her first year with the C on her chest. That was something that uh, we didn't ask Coach Tommy Lang. It's, Maddie Johnson, uh, this, this one's going to be covered up. Maddie Johnson was uh, the um, captain the last year, uh, last two years, I should say, but she is out with an undisclosed injury to start the season, so assuming she comes back, do they give her the C again? It's a good question, Todd. On the shorthand side, coming over is Gonzalez, and she's able to keep that one out, just achingly close for the Saints. But they didn't quite have the angle. Yeah, you'll see a lot of people do that. It, it's sort of like a design play. Not sure if that was a design play from Gerwitz, but that shot goes wide of the cage, and, of course, you get that opportunity on the back side. Here's Gerwitz deflected by O'Brien and again a lunging dive from Gonzalez to smother that puck. So Gon Gonzalez is, is on her game tonight, making some big stops for Miami. Maryville just has to keep, keep getting after it because one of these is bound to go in the back of the net if they stay with it. It's been hard to beat any of the Red Hawks goaltenders. They've only allowed 16 goals all season. Another interesting note, at least to uh, myself anyway, is both of their goaltenders, Alyssa Simpson and Maya Gonzalez, have the exact same statistics in terms of goals against average and save percentage. But their record is uh, Gonzalez is 3-0, and Simpson is 1-2, and so sometimes you just don't get the breaks even though you're putting up the same numbers. That is weird how things work like that, Todd. Stretch pass, they were looking for Tool way out in front though, so that's gonna lead to an icing call. And we're back to five on five as that eats up all the remaining power play time for the Saints. So they are 0 for two thus far. Yeah, nothing to show for on the power play, but like I said in the first period, you like what you see from the power play. They're getting their looks, they're getting good opportunities, and Gonzalez has shut the door. And now it's up to five on five for the Maryville Saints to look for an equalizer. The puck comes over the blue line. Brooks up to Kallhammer on the back check. She had it poked away. Argaropoulos steps up. Kallhammer sweeps it into the corner and then goes off on a change. McGowan showing some soccer skills there with the soft little saddle of the puck. Gerwitz holds it up at the blue line, as does the linesman. And I guess we have an offside. Not sure if the puck got caught up in some paraphernalia there or what, Todd, but I don't think the linesman wanted any part of that play. <laughs> Just ball the whistle dead. Let's, let's get something. Yeah, he was the same one that had to duck and cover when that puck popped over his head. 
O'Brien comes in as the defender takes a spill, but she tries to cut it back through the middle. And put it right back into pressure. Here's Argaropoulos. Back to Gerwitz at the point. Pressure was coming. She sweeps it into the corner. McBain shoulders off the pressure, leads it for O'Brien. She put it in behind the goal. Argaropoulos was there, as was a defender. It's loose along the side of the goal, and Gonzalez says, I've had enough of that. Yeah, stick lift there below the dots. Miami Faithful was hoping for a penalty there. They did not get it. So it does remain five on five. But Gonzalez, very solid so far for the Red Hawks. She's playing a good game tonight. A wrist shot in, scooped up. Gonzalez showing the skills there. Maybe the St. Louis Cardinals could uh, use her as an infielder. They, they've got some openings up the middle potentially. Another one scooped up by Gonzalez. Oh, Todd. <laughs> you can build others up without tearing others down. You work in sports radio. There's no way you believe that. <laughs> Here comes Jones. She'll take a shot. Duncan the save, and then the rebound punched wide. Back the other way we go. Brennan. On her backhand, trying to get onto the forehand. Drives a little scoop shot, and a glove save made by Gonzalez. The rebound is covered. Yeah, I could get into that, Todd, but <laughs> quite frankly, I don't think you want to hear it, and I definitely don't think our listeners want to hear it either. Too, too much inside baseball. 9.39 to go here in the period. I don't need to get a temper in the, at the moment. I'm very calm right now. <laughs> don't get me riled up. Shots are 17-14 in favor of Maryville. So we try to focus on the action. Kelso's slap shot was denied. Stepping up was Lusconis on the block. Furbit goes back the other way. Morris wasn't really expecting it, so she had to reverse quickly. Saints get it up to center, and again, that bouncing puck. This time it settles down. Here's Callhammer with a shot. That one beat the blocker's side, but it ends up wide. Yeah, Callhammer had an opportunity, but a good defensive back check, and she was forced to get that shot off quickly and just couldn't get it on target. So the clock stops on another frozen puck with 8.53 to go here in the second period. Saints... Starting to build a little bit. They kind of utilize that uh, power play, as you mentioned, Marshy, to build some of their offense. This one should end up as an icing call, and it will be. Saints have done a pretty good job so far in the face-off circle. We'll see if that can lead to something here, perhaps a sustained attack. Not too much time off the clock, 8.46 on the big board. Back and forth they go along the near side wall. Tool seals it off. Now she finds a seam, passes it off the end wall to herself. Over towards the far corner. Gerwitz, who's the Energizer Bunny right now, it doesn't seem like she ever leaves the ice. <laughs> She's gonna race all the way back. Slams on the brakes, looks to head north. And then the pass was too far in behind Cooper. Defender got twisted around, no icing on it though. O'Leary had it for a moment, taken back. Hennig can't clear the zone. Now they scrum for it in front of the Maryville bench. Good active sticks from both teams. Smart play by McGowan to come over towards the near wall. If she tried to go to the middle, she was going to put it right into Talibai. McBain drops it off. Here's Dawson. McGowan off the near side wall. Or for Argaropoulos. Couldn't find the handle. 7.25 to go in the period. Here's O'Brien from the half wall. 
Spins to the backhand. With a forehand, left it for McBain. Dawson, or excuse me, Nav, pinches in. Nobody in support though, as the Saints are doing a piecemeal line change right now. Brennan is off the bench. It's a whack at it. This one will end up as an icing call as Nab had the foot race waddle one. So this is a like this is the the you know offensive zone pressure you'd like to see from the Saints. Seems like they're taking control right now in the offensive zone. They're keeping pucks in, they're battling on the boards. They're doing a good job here late in the second period. Saints send out their top line, perhaps sensing that. But they can't hold it in despite winning the faceoff initially. Dawson is back. Quickly off the near side wall. Poisson will sweep it in. Taking it with the soft hands was Cogswell. She got it back out into the neutral zone. Saints are delayed offside, and then there was miscommunication as Rutherford went in before the two other forwards came out. So that allowed Miami more time to clear the zone. Dawson just kind of blindly swats it over here to the near wing. Given up out of the sick of Schuler, but it was bouncing away from her. Too far for Rutherford on the far wing. Right in front of the goal. And the forward, Ailey Lurk, was taken down. And again, this time Poisson goes rink wide. Just to the right of the circle. Rutherford was all by herself though. She was trying to hold it up for some support. Now she'll head off to the bench. 5.45 to go here in the second period. A Bryn Jones goal at 9.34 of the first period has stood the test of time so far. And we talked a lot about that bouncing puck and it, it continues to happen here in the second period. Slap shot by Gerwitz was blocked and then she had to get a good solid stick on that one. Otherwise, Schwartzer would have been off to the races. McGowan pops it in, trickles in behind the Miami goal. Stepping up is Kelso, trying to give Gerwitz a little bit of a breather. Kalhammer on her off wing, carries over to the corner. Miami being hemmed in right now, but Saints unable to do too much with it. But again, the pressure leads to another icing call. What a keep by Gerwitz over there on the far side blue line. If she does not keep that puck in, that's a, I mean, that's a breakaway. Simple as that. Yeah, Schwartzer would have had a clear lane towards goal. And even if she doesn't score, I think you probably draw a penalty in that instance. Instead, Saints still find themselves down by one. Tool left it for Kelsel. She tried to slip it up the wall. Walls it off and holds it in. They were looking for a deflection from O'Leary. She actually slowed up that shot. And Furbit has to retreat. This again will lead to an icing call. Oh, they wave it off. Yeah, that far linesman said it hit off a stick just barely. Now we have an icing the other way. So that'll keep out the Maryville players after Miami got a fresh five out there but a, a fortunate turn of events for the Red Hawks because they had some extremely tired players out there and given the fact that the second period you have the long uh, line change that was making it even more difficult off the draw Cogswell holds it in and just kind of wraps it around him behind the net Furbit has it she looks up ice Pops one towards center off a defensive stick. That actually helped out. The shot into the glove hand side, and that's stopped by Gonzalez as Cooper was trying to cut it back across the green. Yeah, Gonzalez has seen everything tonight. So a good heads up shot, trying to go against the grain. Maybe give Gonzalez a different kind of look on that shot. And get an offensive zone faceoff win as well. Dawson had eyes on goal, but that puck kind of rolled on her, so she had to dish it off. It ends up with Miami. 
They pop into the offensive zone, charging in is Smith. And she was turned around just a little bit, so ends up back with Maryville. Argaropoulos gave it away, and then a chance from the far hand side ends up off of Tool Stick and wide. Bouncer in towards Duncan. And she's never been uh, the most confident in her stick handling ability, so she decides just to cover that one up. Yeah, not a bad hold just to get some fresh bodies out on the ice. The only reason why you might want to play that is Miami was changing, so if you want to get a stretch pass up the ice, maybe get a scoring opportunity off that. I can see uh, why you'd want to play that, but just to get some fresh bodies out there. Nice stretch pass. Oh, man. What, is that a two-line pass? Is that still even a thing? No, I... <laughs> No, I think uh, was it was it offsides and oh, obviously down so, from yeah. the other end. You got to play it back. Because I was going to say, Poisson got a stick to it, so it couldn't have been icing. There's been a couple trips on. I believe that was Dawson to take the spill off the faceoffs, but um, no calls as they were pretty much incidental. So didn't expect there to be a penalty. Puck in behind the net. Miami looking for a centering pass. Instead, it's over to the far wing. Deflected in front, and a good save made by Duncan. I don't think she was expecting that one to come through, and then it bounced right in front. That one chopped over the goal. Loose along the end line. Punched over here to the near corner. Jones with another shot, and this time it's eaten up by Duncan. And yeah, so a late push here with 2.42 remaining in the second period by Miami of Ohio. Couple good looks there for the Red Hawks. One went right over the, the cage, but Sawyer Duncan having to make some big stops here for the Saints to keep it a one goal game. Both goaltenders, like you said, at the beginning of the broadcast, Todd, it could be a, a goaltending matchup that everyone is enjoying, that everyone could enjoy the whole, uh, the whole way here through 60 minutes, and that's what we're seeing so far. Lasconis manages to not to knife her way through, got the shot off. Duncan turned it aside. Furbit backhanded over here to the near wing. Callhammer was trying to drive it up the ice. Kelso has it. Intercepted as it was bouncing through the neutral zone. And we're looking up for Brooks. Kelso holds it in as the Saints trying to establish something in on the attack. Under two to go. Tool is bumped off the puck. Here's Brooks. Nobody in the middle, though, for the Saints as they're trying a piecemeal change again. Kelso's up from the blue line. Leaves it for Tool, but she's on her off wing. Now she spins back towards the forehand. Centering pass. She had Cooper. Couldn't connect. Here's O'Leary. She takes a spill as there were just too many sticks in the way for her to keep her balance. Red Hawks doing a line change of their own with 1.25 to go. A little scoop pass, finds O'Leary up the ice. Cooper's driving towards the net. O'Leary off the boards to herself, but she's walled off, taken in by Hennig. Now here's Cooper from the angle. That misses everything. Dawson will hold it in. Took an odd hop off the boards and popped up in the air. Shot by O'Leary goes wide. Nab was trying to hold it in. Now that's going to lead to a potential two-on-one. Numbers even out. Now they favor Maryville, and Duncan has to make the save on the shot from the wall. Seen a lot of pinching from the Maryville defense that have led to a few possible or potential odd man breaks for the Red Hawks. Of course, Maryville doing a good job at back-checking, like you said, evening up that, that rush, but... Um, something to keep an eye out for the rest of the game. Here's Poisson. She finds a seam up through the middle. She puts it off the blocker. She had eyes to that blocker side the entire time, and Gonzalez just outweighted her and was good in the positioning. Wow, what a move by Sydney Poisson. I mean, she just glides through the neutral zone, makes a nifty move right inside the blue line and just couldn't bury it, but you love to see an opportunity like that from the Saints. 
They win another faceoff. Wiswan tries to put it back in towards the middle. It's pushed around Gerwitz. In comes a shot as that was turned away. Bryn Jones, again, the lone goal scorer to this point. She was looking for number two. Instead, the Saints will head up ice. 20 seconds left. Here's Brennan. Scoops one towards the glove hand side, trying to use the defender as a screen. That puck is not going to go far enough for icing. So that'll pretty much kill off the rest of this period. Poisson almost gave it away. She tried to hand it back to Gerwitz, but no harm, no foul. There is the buzzer. 40 minutes are in the books. And the score after two is the same score we had after one, one to nothing. Of course, the goal scoring wasn't there here in the second period, but I thought the offense picked up from both sides of the ice. Miami had their chances. Maryville had their chances. Both goaltenders stood tall here in the second period. Should make for a fun third. So we'll discuss what happened in the second and look forward to the third in our Arco Trucking Intermission Report coming up right here in a moment. This is the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Lost together, we discovered ourselves again. And we realized that the things that matter deserve time. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates. Because we've learned to save for the moments that were always there. Never tasted this good. Coke with coffee. We blended Coke with rich coffee for one very good reason. Your afternoon pick me up routine needed it. Simple as that. Coke with coffee. For the past 70 years, Lou Fuse has called St. Louis home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that you need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities, and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, it's our anniversary. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us with anniversary savings and specials all year long. 
and everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money back guarantee, and exchange policy. There's power in numbers. Number ones will cook you with that first step. Your L, sir. Compliments of the chef. Number tens, more gold than Midas. Midas who? One, two, three, four, three, two, three, two, one. Twenty fours will live in your head. I'm on. Thirty-threes put in so many hours, they'll be the first to defeat Father Time. What you got, Thirty-three? Thumbs up, old man. Run it back. I said run it back. Fifties. Ice in their veins. And 87s are so good, they just set up shop in the end zone. Next! There's power in numbers. Take yours. Power Aid. More power for 0 to 99, more power for me. Welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center as we are in our intermission report. After 40 minutes of play, it's still one to nothing in favor of the Red Hawks as they lead your Maryville Saints with 20 minutes left in regulation. Not a whole lot to talk about in terms of scoring, Marshy, as yeah. nobody did any scoring. Uh, but the shots were the exact same as they were in the first period, 10 to 9 within that period. So now it's 20 to 18 in favor of Maryville. So they're getting their looks. Yeah. They're testing Maya Gonzalez. They just haven't found a way to crack through yet. Yeah, Maya Gonzalez has looked great so far through two periods. A lot of back and forth. That first period was, or the second period was very uh, similar to what we saw in the first period. The bouncing pucks. You got to capitalize on those opportunities. Uh, and I thought for the majority of that period, Maryville dominated, in my opinion, in the offensive zone. I thought they had most of the the looks that uh, the better. Uh, and more sustained pressure in the offensive zone. Don't get me wrong, Miami of Ohio, they also had their opportunities as well. However, they, didn't, they weren't coming uh, in the same shift, per se, where you saw Maryville, they would get a couple shots on net, and they would have that same uh, group of forwards and defense out there uh, getting a few opportunities all within the same shift. Miami of Ohio, not so much, but they did get their opportunities, and Sawyer Duncan did a good job at keeping the puck out of the back of the net. Now, we've talked about the bouncing puck a couple times. Obviously, both teams have to play with the same conditions. But now that you've had 40 minutes to kind of get used to it, is there anything that you can kind of do to, to understand what's going to go on and almost plan for it, I guess, in the third period? I mean, with the bouncing puck, it's all very random. You just try and get a stick on it and keep things very simple and and just keep, 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 your, keep your feet moving. That's really all there is to it because – you can make a pass. It could skip over a stick, and next thing you know, if you stop moving your feet, maybe you don't beat out that icing. Maybe you don't get to that loose puck. So 
uh, with the bouncing puck, just keep your feet moving and, and, like I said, make those simple plays coming out of your own zone. Uh, and if you're a defender and you're trying to step up, uh, just get sticks in the lane. You never know what could happen. Uh, but I did mention it in that second period. I thought the defense were, were pinching maybe a little too much. We saw a couple odd man rushes there for the Red Hawks. So maybe that's something that they take a look at here in the intermission and maybe crack down on that. Now they are down by one, so you could see the you could see the defense starting to step up later as the third period progresses because they need to be aggressive to get a goal to tie the game. Yeah, it's that style of game that uh, everybody seems to play right now. You activate the defense, but mm -hmm. as you as you pointed out, it's it's kind of a dangerous thing sometimes if you get caught up a little bit too much. It's anybody's hockey game though right now. There are 18 saves for, or excuse me, 17 saves for Sawyer Duncan. 20 saves for Maya Gonzalez, but with a one to nothing game, it hangs on the edge of a knife. That'll wrap it up for our intermission report. We'll come back with your third period of play. Don't go too far. Keep it right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. What you want, Lou Fuse has got for the past 70 years, Lou Fuse is called St. Louis Home, growing our dealership and community family, delivering the best experience. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, where we'll treat you right, you'll see. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, get the respect that you need. With 17 brands, 12 dealerships, thousands of new, certified, pre-owned, used, and motorsport vehicles, and millions of happy customers, Lou Fuse is here for you. Year after year, Lou Fuse has been proud to support youth athletics, honored to give back to community charities, and happy to deliver the respect and customer service you deserve. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, treat you right for 70. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, it's our anniversary. Come celebrate our 70th anniversary with us, with anniversary savings and specials all year long. And everyone gets the Fuse family promise, including warranties on new and Fuse certified vehicles, a money-back guarantee, and exchange policy. L-O-U-F-U-S-Z, every treat you right, you'll see. There's two types of drivers out there. Drivers who know how to protect their investment and drivers who don't. Car owners who know how to get more miles per gallon and owners who don't. We're talking people who know their Schaefer and people who don't. Which one are you? From cars to trucks to diesel workhorses, whatever you drive, there's a Schaefer synthetic oil for you. Do you know your Schaefer? Ask for it at an automotive retailer near you. St. Louis, 314-645-2000. This is the letter I've been telling you about. This letter is for you. From what I hear, you're supposed to be the next Tom Brady. What I'm about to say is important. Never let them call you the next Tom Brady. When they compare you to the goats, tune it out. When they say you're a sixth round draft pick, store it away. Compare yourself to nobody but the kid in the mirror. The one who goes all in, all out, and has the crazy confidence to know that who you are today is just a piece of who you're going to become. This letter's for that you, the one no one will see coming. Sincerely, Tom. Moneta may be one of the nation's largest independent wealth managers, but what we pride ourselves on most is serving each client like they're part of the family. That's why we go to extraordinary lengths to help our clients reach their unique financial goals. Whether launching a business, providing retirement planning for employees, or building a multi-generational legacy. At Moneta, whatever you cherish, we help protect it. Today, tomorrow, and into the future.
third period. Still a one goal game. That goal from Bryn Jones back at 934 has lasted up until the third period at least. Miami trying to scoop one in. Gerwitz was right there along the blue line and they're gonna get Maryville for a hand pass. Only 19 seconds gone here in the period. Neutral zone draw. Saints win it clean. They pop it up looking for Rutherford. Brennan is there as well, but two Red Hawks are in the vicinity in addition. McGowan will chase it down, getting there before Farrell. Farrell gets a stick in. Gerwitz has to pick it up. Just a little push pass up through the middle. Rutherford trying to track it down, unable to hold the zone. Red Hawks carry it up with space on the left-hand side. Gerwitz got a stick to it, denying LeBear a chance to charge in towards goal. LeBear with eight points on the season. Would have liked to get another one here on that play. Never even got a shot, shot opportunity. Off the dashers, Brooks got a stick to it. Red Hawks still cleared out. Brought in by Jones here on the near side. Off the shin pad of Nab. Jones will sweep it down into the corner and head off on a change. 125 gone in the period. Red Hawks get it in the offensive zone, but again, just a little bit disjointed from both these teams. Dawson for the far corner. Lobs one up. Call Hammer tried to scoop at it. Not sure if she got a piece or not. Nevertheless, she heads off on a change. Heinzman got in the way as this one stays in the Maryville zone. They cannot clear on a second attempt either. Bounces in, sticked away by Duncan. It's probably going wide anyway, but you don't want to allow that to go in behind the net. Tool gets it up to the blue line. It does cross, so a delayed offside. So that's too quickly negated as the uh, Red Hawks tie things up. Centering pass from Oliver. Couldn't find its intended target. Simeone throws a bit of a bump over on the far side. Disrupts Kelsel as she was bringing it in. Saints have it in the offensive zone. Kelsel will hold it. Off the far wall, a shot from O'Leary, and it's eaten up by Gonzalez. You know, Todd, I wonder, you know, you mentioned not a ton of offense. Obviously, we can see that from the score and whatnot, but we're seeing chances from both teams. But I wonder if that late start has anything to do with the disruption of, of these offenses. You know, as, as a player, you get so into a routine, and then, of course, almost, an, I want to say it was about 45 minutes to an hour that we had to wait for puck drop. Not saying that is the reason, but uh, you just never know. I, d I definitely do think that it probably throws them off, just uh, your your pregame meals and your, your meetings and skates and all that. It's like they're all coming at different times, and... Uh, obviously, at a collegiate level, you have to get used to it to a certain point. Uh, case in point, because tomorrow's face-off between these two teams will be at uh, 3 o'clock Central Time. And then when um, Maryville takes on Grand Valley State next weekend, it's a 5.45 on Saturday and then another 3 p.m. on Sunday. So they're just kind of all over the board. But they've got to wake themselves up a little bit here as we are about 16 minutes away from the 11 o'clock hour local time. 16-16 left to go here in the third. It's still a one goal game. Saints were able to jab one into the corner. Rolls over to the far side. Brennan just a step too slow getting there. She's able to recover, though. Puts on. Tried to bank that one off the goaltender. Here's Gerwitz. Deflected. Oh, and Poisson was tied up. Otherwise, she might have had a chance. Here's Gerwitz again. 
That one rainbows down. Stick save was made. Now from the angle, they sweep it towards goal, and Rutherford was denied. Literally punched over here to the near side by the glove of the defender. Yeah, Rutherford, Rutherford with two opportunities there. Rutherford digs in along the near wall. And it's scooped out by LeBaire as she tries to get off for some fresh legs. Saints trying to catch them in the change. Instead, they'll dump it in. Brooks on the four check. Moore was in as well. Saints are offside, so they have to touch up. Some of the fans who have stuck around here for this nightcap trying to get their Maryville Saints going, but now here's a three on one. Duncan makes the initial save and a quick whistle. The puck was put in, but the referee blew that and Miami is not at all happy. Yeah, somewhat of a breakdown for the Saints right at the blue line of the Red Hawks. And that led to the three on one. A little miscommunication as that puck trickled by. But a good stop by Sawyer Duncan to keep her team in the game. Now that's going to lead to an odd man rush the other way. And then Brooks' pass for Callhammer was just out of her reach. She's going to pick it up along the end wall as there was a miscue from the Miami defender. Miami ends up with it again. Knocked out of midair by Moore. Furbit keeps it alive in the zone. They try to scrape it off the wall. Three Maryville players right around there. And it's still Miami with possession. Moore gets a stick on it, leaves it. Brooks in the corner. She was spun around. And again, the Red Hawks are able to send it up the wall. And this time they do get it out. Shots were 20 to 18 in favor of Maryville after two periods. Now it is 24-21. The Saints hoping that their next shot will hit the back of the net. Hurwitz was still putting on her glove coming off of the bench. Was able to get it on just before settling that puck down. McGowan sweeps it into the offensive zone. Cooper will try to chase it down, but McGowan was on the wrong side of the red line, so that will lead to an icing call. Yeah, just maybe a, a little bit more patience on that. Settle the puck down and find the winger. But Maryville had their opportunity. They had a two-on-one, and that pass just a little too far out front. And uh, it's a cliche, though, Todd, but it's a, it's a game of inches. Puck comes out in front, but it was up in the air. Smith took a whack at it and couldn't quite bunt it down as we circle back to the baseball analogies. In the far side corner, swept over here to the near. Benjamin... Couldn't quite get it around Tool. She settles it down. Straight away from the blue line. Stick handling up through the slot and then the puck just snuck away. Now Cooper spins, fires right into the glove of Gonzalez. Gonzalez has been sharp tonight. She's tracking every shot. Maryville is going to have to start peppering shots on net. And look for that rebound. Throw a puck on net. Make it hit the pads and go hard to the blue paint, but she's snagging everything with the glove. Puck was deflected up and out of play. And I think they're gonna say it's gonna come out of the zone. So, bit of misfortune there for the Maryville Saints, as good as they've been on the faceoff. That line is just, he's had a, a, a weird game here tonight. He needs to get out of the way. <laughs> that puck popped, him up, popped up and hit him in the hands. I don't think I've ever really seen that before. Kelso was twisted around in the corner. O'Brien comes over in support. Kelso bumped off by Jones. Some of the Maryville fans uh, trying to start up some sort of chant. Here comes O'Brien on her off wing, sends it into the corner and heads off on a change. Maryville trying to get a fresh trio of forwards out there. Red Hawks get it around. And they get it around McGowan too. But now they're changing their lines. Quick pad save. 
Nobody for Maryville able to scoop that up, otherwise they would have had a counterattacking opportunity. Both teams trying to keep their legs fresh here in this third period. We've already played just about eight minutes. This one rolling in towards Gonzalez and she will cover it up. So with the Saints having their top line out on the ice, they have an opportunity to win this face off and put a look towards goal. Lob one in behind the net, Poisson left it, but Brennan had vacated that area. Rutherford comes over, they steal it away from Brennan, McGowan with a slap shot, she was looking for a deflection, unfortunately the wrong colored jersey got a piece of it. Now McGowan goes down, that allows the Red Hawks to come in, a shot in and Duncan makes the save, oh. and then crashing the net is Lasconis, she knocks Duncan down. That doesn't make Maryville happy at all, especially Duncan having knee problems from last season. She's up and all right, but I'm actually a little bit surprised that, uh, you know, they are gonna call Lasconis for goaltender interference and the, the Miami fans do not like that call, but I mean, that is the right call. She's gotta, you can't, just charge in on the net like that. And you, you like when players go hard to the net. They're going hard to the net for a reason, for a rebound, but there was an ample amount of time to slow down and to put on the brakes and not run into Sawyer Duncan. Yeah, I, I completely agree, especially if that puck is loose at all. But, yeah, I mean, it was pretty clearly uh, in between the pads. So the Saints are able to win the face off and they will have a third power play opportunity. We'll see if the third time is the charm. Gerwitz's shot was blocked by Jones. Rutherford couldn't quite get it and then the pass from Brennan, or excuse me, O'Leary, is uh, gloved down. Gerwitz brings it right back in. Red Hawks with another opportunity to clear and they do not do so. Poisson will charge over to the far corner. Trying to set up on the forehand. Back to the backhand. And she circles all the way around the world. Puts a pass out in front and that was knocked away by Gonzalez. Gerwitz keeps it alive. O'Brien from the corner. Poisson on the circle. Rister! And that one's deflected up and out of play. And that's a good shot by... Sydney Poisson, bodies in, bodies in front, and that was a tough save. Had to be made from Maya Gonzalez. Not sure what's going on here. Timeout, perhaps. Yeah, this I is have. a huge part of the game right now. A good opportunity for Maryville to even this one up, and. They've had their looks on the power play throughout the whole night. They just haven't been able to capitalize. They need to slow things down, find their look, and bury it in the back of the net. Yeah, I didn't see a signal as to who took the timeout, but I suppose at this juncture it doesn't wholly matter. Um, oh, no, it matters, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to guess, I would say that Miami probably took it trying to slow down whatever momentum was building for the Maryville Saints, but I would have guessed Maryville took. I guess if we get another timeout, we'll we'll test our theories then. So Lascotus is in the box at least for another 105, perhaps less if Maryville can get on the board. The face off is pretty much tied up. Hassan ends up with the puck on the edge of the circle, gets it back, kicks it, skate to stick. She's got a shooting lane and shot it over the goal. She had that top right corner open. And they gave her a lane to shoot it, Todd. Gerwitz comes back in, puts that shoulder down, and she shoots over the goal as well. That might spring a counterattack. Instead, the shuffleboard action from Schuler didn't get very far. Saints will change up their lines. 30 seconds left. Still enough time to get back into the zone if they hurry. But 
Here comes Brooks. Plays it right into the stick of Jones. Brooks keeps it alive on along the wall in the zone. 15 seconds left on the power play. A centering pass off the goaltender. Now Dawson with a slap shot. There's a blocker save. Brooks swipes at it. Another shot from the left-hand side. And again, Gonzalez is able to find him. Maya Gonzalez doing a great job at finding that puck. Able to make the stop, but heads up by Maryville. They're getting their chances. They're firing pucks on net. They have about five seconds, so they need to be weary about the Red Hawk coming out of the box. A cleared down off the faceoff, so the Saints are 0 for 3 with the manpower advantage. They just still have 9.30 left to try to even things up, potentially at five on five. Push forward by Tool. She's joined by O'Leary. Tool will guide it around. She's finding a little bit of space, but has to carry over here to the near corner. Looking back towards the point. Fervent, I believe, was the intended target. Now they're going to say it is an icing call. So another offensive zone faceoff coming up for the Saints with 9.09 to go here in the third. And now the Saints will bring out some fresh bodies out on the ice. Gerwitz back out there for the Saints on the back end. Gerwitz with Kelso. Kelso pops one towards the net, sticked away. Straight away for Gerwitz. Couldn't quite get that to settle down, so he pounds it into the corner. Brooks. Keeps it alive, but again, that puck just kept evading her. She couldn't get that down on end. Off the backside of linesman, that's the same one that's been getting that puck up in his grill the entire game. And the Saints were changing, so nobody could touch that puck. And the shot from the far circle gets past Duncan. It's two to nothing. Natalie Farrell was able to just sneak that underneath the blocker. And a counterattack out of nowhere doubles up the lead for the Red Hawks. Yeah, that's just an unfortunate change right there. You get caught, a two on one. And the Red Hawks, they've capitalized on their, on their opportunities, whether it was a turnover or if it was a bad line change. And that's what this game is all about, Todd. You don't get a ton of opportunities throughout a game. Some do, depends on how the night's going, but when you do get your chances, you gotta bury them, and so far the Red Hawks have done that tonight. So Jones' goal back in the first period will not be the only goal of the contest. Farrell scores at 11.34, makes the lead two to nothing. And it's not as though the Red Hawks have not deserved a second goal. They haven't played poorly, but you just felt like Maryville was starting to build something. They just couldn't get the puck to settle down for them. So now they need two just to tie. And for the most part, I think Maryville has controlled this game in the offensive zone. If you would look at time on attack in the offensive zone, I think Maryville has the upper edge there, but it's turnovers like this that are leading to goals. Duncan makes a save. She's able to smother the rebound on another good look from Bryn Jones. She was looking for number 11. She's already got her 10th here in this game. But to your point, Marcia, you have to give credit to Maya Gonzalez. As, uh, she has been a big reason why her team has uh, the score line the way that they do. It's two to nothing. Can't say that the Saints have not had their opportunities. Yeah, and she stood tall. And the Saints, they've had some really good shooting or some really good scoring chances in those high danger zones, uh, in the high, the high danger areas. However, they've missed the net. They've had two shots that went right over the net or went just wide of the post. And uh, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna score if you don't hit the net. Yeah, those misses from Gerwitz and Poisson just minutes before the second goal was scored. Looking huge right now. 7-10 to go here in the third. It's a two to nothing game. Saints still winning the shot battle, 28 to 25. As uh, Gerwitz was 
yelling at one of the officials. I think she, oh, the door was open apparently. Yeah, it looks like the Zamboni door is, yeah, it was like you said, Todd, it's open. It's not uh, fully closed or perhaps it's, it got pushed. It's pushed out of, I don't even know how you would describe that. The form of it, you gotta like push it back in. So they were trying to get somebody over into the corner to, to do so, but there's really nothing along the rink to pull on to try to do it that way. Corner to corner. Red Hawks send it up the far wall, held in along by McGowan. She kicks it, keeps it alive as the Saints are changing up. 6.35 to go here in the period. It's going to take a pretty solid effort over the last six and a half minutes from the Saints to just tie this one up. McGowan looks up the boards. Here's Rutherford. She sends it across the ice. Poisson finds herself some space. A quick shot. Gonzalez denies again. Yeah, nice move from, or a nice move by Sidney Poisson. And that's been the difference right now between the Saints scoring and not scoring is Maya Gonzalez not allowing that rebound to pop out. She immediately puts the, the trapper over it, and we get a whistle. Red Hawks win the face off this time over to the near wall. Schwartzer just guides it out. Saints are able to close it down as they slap it off the end wall, gathered up by Furbit. Rutherford was twisted around. His contact came from behind from Lorkey. Smith comes up through the neutral zone. And it's brought across the line by Cogswell. O'Brien can't get it out. Dawson in her own corner. Near side, Furbit. Brooks with a little tap pass. O'Brien brings it over that Maryville logo at center to the far circle. Takes a shot off the cuff of the glove. Brooks comes in trying to pick up the loose change. They're hacking and whacking at it, and Gonzalez will cover it up. Now we might have a penalty here, maybe, maybe not. Probably not. A lot of pushing and shoving in that blue paint there. So 5.15 left here in the third period, Todd. And, and this Maryville team, they gotta find the back of the net soon. Time definitely not on their side. It's just about five minutes left. We have the men's D1 team still here showing support. They're getting a little camera time, whether they intended to or not. Call Hummer tried to get it up towards the corner as she spun around along the half wall. But Red Hawks doing a great job to just kind of clog everything up, keep it along the perimeter. Four and a half to go in the period. Charging off the bench is Brennan. She's able to guide it towards the net. It's loose in the crease. There's a defender that covered it up. That, that might be a penalty shot. It is, Todd. That's a penalty shot. The referee put up the X, so the Saints with an opportunity to get their first goal of the game on a penalty shot opportunity. So who's gonna take it is the question. In the past it always would have been Sidney Poisson, but uh, now it looks like it's gonna be Emma Gerwitz. Leading goal scorer for the Saints, the captain. And she put them on the board here. Comes over from the right-hand side to the edge of the circle, into the slot, forgets about the puck, regains it off the stick. A big save by Gonzalez as she keeps the goose egg on the board. 
been a game of chances, Todd, and no better chance than a penalty shot to try and cut the lead to one, and unfortunately for the Saints, they cannot get the goal. However, they are pressing here with 420 left in this one. We'll see if maybe they can get one here. So taking nothing away from that save because it was a big one from Gonzalez, but you have to wonder if that puck stayed on Kerwitz's stick and she didn't have to recover it, if she would have been able to do something a little bit different. Offside was the call, so we'll have a neutral zone faceoff as the, uh, as you mentioned, Marshy, the men's D1 team has uh, come out of the uh, bar area from behind us, and uh, they're making some noise, trying yeah. to well, they're chanting spur something uh, on. Jack, in re reference to Jack Harrison, their captain, who was engaged, or just got engaged tonight. Into the mixer, Moore was there, but so was Gonzalez, as she has just been unbeatable here tonight. And speaking of Jack Harrison, he's leading the uh, the what would you call it, the roller coaster? <laughs> yeah. And he is all dressed up in a tuxedo. He's wearing a tuxedo right now, trying to fire up this girl's. Uh, this uh, this team right now for the Maryville women's squad. I don't think so. I don't think anybody told him he doesn't have to wear that until the day of, not not the day you ask. But he's into it. Now Jones tries to pop one towards goal. That was tonight. As there was a myriad of bodies in front. Puck loose in behind. McGowan tries to slip it up the wall. Red Hawks cut it off and send it right back in. But if nothing else, uh, Captain Jack provided some entertainment for the uh, home and visiting fans. He said. It's been an interesting evening of hockey. Doesn't seem to be going Maryville's way for either the men's D1 or women's D1 teams. Is it looking, it is looking more and more like both of them are gonna fall, potentially by two goal scorers. 2.22 left to go in the third. Saints still trying to get it into the offensive zone to at least try to get that shutout off the board. Red Hawks will clear it down the ice. Sounded like it took a deflection, but they're going to say that it's still an icing call. Just a rowdy bunch over there, if they, uh, the listeners can, can hear. At least, they at least they've kept the chance pretty clean. They're they're a little lathered up, so <laughs> that's one way to put it. <laughs> Another stoppage with 202 to go. Is that one went right in on goal off the faceoff? You know what though, I think that's great that this men's team is here supporting the women's and trying to like you, I mean you mentioned bringing the energy back into the arena, you know, for a little bit. The, uh, you know. For a, a little stretch there, there wasn't a lot of energy from that Maryville bench, and now we're picking it up here in the offensive zone. Wraparound attempt, Gonzalez came over, got the paddle down as well as that right pad. And she is doing everything she can to keep that shutout. Long shot in and an easy glove save. Well, if the Saints do fall tonight, it won't be because of the lack of shots put on net. Gonzalez has just stood tall all night long. She's looked fantastic between the pipes, and she's made the saves when she's needed to, especially that penalty shot, and that seemed to be the deflator on the Maryville side was when Emma Gerwitz could not connect with uh, the penalty shot. 
Nice little move by Schurler to get through. They managed to get it over into the middle, but Duncan cut it off. And she was able to stop that one. 124 left in the third now. But yeah, they, I mean, any penalty shot save is big for a goaltender. For but sure. Given the amount of time that was still left, there probably would have been a little over four minutes left if memory serves. So that would have been plenty of time, only down by one. But to your point, Marshy, they took the wind out of the sails. 110 to go. That one's going to be too far for Poisson. Not quite far enough for icing. So the Saints in on the four check. Brennan digs it out. Trying to get the return pass as Poisson has it in the corner. Looking for Rutherford in the far side. She's able to sweep it past. Surrounded by Red Hawks players though. Under a minute to go. Saints with the puck. Here's Gerwitz shooting lane available, but Gonzalez takes up a lot of space in the crease and she took up even more because she cut off the angle. And we talked about this in the game before this one in the, the men's D1, how Coach Hogan elected not to pull the goaltender. Uh, we will see the goalie being pulled now, but 37 seconds left. You would have thought with a little bit of time in that ozone that Perhaps the Saints would have pulled Sawyer Duncan a little bit early. Gerwitz pinches in from the point to keep it alive. Here's Moore. She cuts in from the angle. They try to sweep it towards the goal. And again, a lunging save from Gonzalez. Gonzalez is on a mission tonight to put up a shutout. Some great stops. And maybe it's just one of those nights if you're a Maryville Saint. You do everything you can, get the puck to the net. You have your opportunities, and sometimes you just got to tip your cap to the opposing goaltender because Maya Gonzalez has played a terrific game tonight. Red Hawks have it. They scoop it up, gloved down by Gerwitz. It's loose right in front of the Red Hawks bench. They will clear it down. That hops over the stick of Lasconis. Five seconds left, four seconds. Not enough time to put this one in, so it's gonna finish a two to nothing win for Miami. And the Saints fall to three, three and one on the season, and their home record is now 500 as well. Yeah, good hockey game here tonight. We talked about the offenses in the pregame show. It was a low total in scoring tonight. Of course, Maryville could not punch one through, but if you want to look at it from those opportunities both teams had, you got to tip your cap to Maya Gonzalez, as well as Sawyer Duncan. She made some great stops as well to keep her team in this game. So overall, a great hockey game, and we're uh, excited to see what transpires tomorrow. So we'll step aside for a brief moment. We'll give you our final thoughts on the other side. It's two to nothing, a final. The Miami Red Hawks defeat the Maryville Saints. Keep it right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network.
Welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center. One final time, Todd Pugel alongside Andrew Marsh, where the Red Hawks defeat your Saints by a final score of two to nothing. But as you mentioned, Marsh, it wasn't for lack of uh, opportunities yeah. for the Red Hawks, or excuse me, for the Saints. They outshoot the Red Hawks overall 36 to 28, 16 to 10 just in that third period alone. They just absolutely could not defeat Maya Gonzalez. Yeah, Maya Gonzalez was great out there. Uh, her glove was working really well, and she was limiting those opportunities in front of the net. We talked about it in the intermission reports about going hard to the net, trying to get those rebounds. However, there just weren't that many rebounds later in the game because Maya Gonzalez was uh, eliminating those. So it was a goaltending duel between Gonzalez and Duncan. Gonzalez coming up the better of that one, keeping that shutout. Despite facing 36 shots, she kept them all out. Uh, the game-winning goal was scored way back in the first period with Jones scoring back at 9.34. They do get an insurance goal with Farrell cutting in and scoring against Duncan. Uh, as you mentioned, Marshy, Duncan might like to have that one back, but ultimately when you can't get a goal on the board of your own, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, you got to score one to win one. So uh, I thought Emma Gerwitz had a great opportunity on a penalty shot. Of course, penalty shots, shootouts, all that good stuff. They're very exciting, uh, but she could not capitalize. And I think right when that happened, you kind of had this feeling that maybe Maryville wouldn't get it done tonight. It was a, a moment to where you could have swung the game in the, the direction of the Saints, maybe get a, an equalizer there after the, the penalty shot. However, Maya Gonzalez, she was terrific tonight. And like I said, during the broadcast, sometimes you just got to tip your cap and, you know, move on to the next day. And I think that's what the Saints team's going to do. They have another one tomorrow, and they're going to look for the split. So they'll have an opportunity to try to shake this one off real quickly before we go. If you're the Red Hawks, do you go with the Ken Hitchcock philosophy? Your goaltender got a shout out. Do we see Gonzalez again tomorrow? Uh, if I was the coach, I would probably leave her in there. She just got a shutout. So, um, you know, you want to keep building on that. But also you want to get your, your goaltender's uh, work as well. So maybe they do switch it up. Maybe they don't. Um, I'm not a coach. That's why I'm standing, or I guess I'm not standing. I'm sitting here uh, talking about it. Um, but I think the Red Hawks do have a decision to make, and um, we'll see what they do. But either way, the Saints need to keep doing what they're doing tonight. They funneled a lot of pucks towards the net, and uh, they just need to keep shooting because eventually they're going to find the back of the net. So we'll see if the Saints can get on the board tomorrow afternoon. We hope you'll join us for that broadcast. It'll be these same two teams, the Red Hawks against the Saints. Puck will drop at 3 p.m. Central Time. Until then, for Andrew Marsh, I've been Todd Panula. We thank Eric Skelton for running things behind the scenes. For everybody here at the Maryville Saints, thank for Maryville Saints Hockey Network, I almost had it. We thank <laughs> you for watching. Have a great night, everyone. The Maryville Saints Hockey Network thanks you for watching this presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association.